Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we're going to be looking at lines of support and lines of resistance specifically. Before we get into anything of a learning and, and teaching or anything like that about technical analysis, because this is TA Tuesday brought to you by BitBuy, we are going to look at a couple of different articles, talk about some stuff happening in the economy and everything else. Now, we all know that there has been some issues. We, we've talked about the stock market and the capitulation that's happened and everything else like that. So obviously with that in mind, we got to keep that context in mind before we take a look at the Bitcoin chart because the Bitcoin chart is looking down. So central banks in Ukraine are looking to promote fair Bitcoin regulations. I think this is important. I like that the Ukraine specifically is taking the stance, uh, you know, because China's kind of, or uh, Russia, I should say, has taken their stance on Bitcoin and Ukraine and Russia have kind of a contentious relationship at this point. So I do like that they're at least taking this chance. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm not pro-Russia. Do you think an outlook like this, like the Ukrainian parliament is taking here, is really important as blockchain technology? technology and cryptocurrency move forward in our society. Uh, we need to foster innovation and make sure that the regulations are in place to protect people, right? Protecting investors and protecting people from these scams that are so prevalent or uh, Ponzi schemes, pump and dumps. Uh, I'm sorry, like coins like SafeMoon have no business actually being a thing on exchanges, being promoted by celebrities and everything. We need regulations in those regards because there are bad actors in, in the space. But at the end of the day, we do need to foster innovation because what this technology does is it fundamentally changes everything that we think about in terms of monetary value, money, stores of value, and payment structures. So what it will do for this world is incredible. We talked about how some CEOs are really bullish on where payment structures are going to enhance and, and kind of develop as cryptocurrency moves forward. And again, I think banks are going to have to adopt so eventually banks are going to adopt and kind of move into the cryptocurrency space and adopt these payment structures because it's going to help their business. Now, Salvador has been kind of an interesting thing in the news, and the president declares himself a dictator as a response in mass protests. Now, this was a joke. Full disclosure, this is a joke on Twitter. However, I, I'm i sorry if you're in a political uh, position where you have power I don't, I don't see autocratic things as, as jokes. Uh, now, this comes and admits the big uh, protests that are happening right now in El Salvador. A quick Google search will show you there's a lot happening with Bitcoin protests in El Salvador. BBC has covered it. A couple of other people have covered it. There's a lot of people that don't want Bitcoin. And again, just go back on what I understand from the argument. There's a lot of other problems in the country. Why are we focusing on this? Why this? So it might be an education issue. Again, I'm not here to instill my views on any people at all. So I mean, like if they don't want Bitcoin, they don't want Bitcoin. Uh, so clearly there's some destabilization happening and some displeasure with the current president of El Salvador. So just keep that in mind. You know, there are the contrasts between countries that are adopting Bitcoin and countries that aren't. Interestingly enough, I also saw a poll that 41% of Texans actually want Bitcoin as legal tender. I I don't know. I'm skeptical that that poll is accurate, but still interesting to see. And I think more Americans are waking up to that that uh, front. More North Americans, me being Canadian. And despite the Bitcoin dips, we've talked about this so much on the channel. I just want to hammer this home before we get into the technical analysis piece of this video. But despite the Bitcoin exchange reserves reaching the lowest since 2018, reaching the lowest since after the capitulation, after the 2017 bull run, the absolute lowest, we're still dipping. The price is still dipping. The price is still going down, right? This chart to me looks bullish. This is a bullish chart, a bullish indicator. The trend will go up, will continue. 
Right now, we're in a bit of a lull. We're retesting some critical levels. We're probably going to drop below these levels. Bitcoin has to go down before it goes back up again. We have to kind of hit that bottom and rebuild up. Where that bottom is, most likely somewhere in the 32,000 range that we've discussed before. Who knows? But at this point, we do have to reach that bottom before we kind of make that leg up. As unpleasant as that is for everyone to hear. Again, I don't believe that the bull market is going to end here in this year. Okay, now we're going to go over to our bit by chart and talk about trend lines, support and resistance. First, we're going to go over trend line. Now, typically with trend lines, everyone's going to draw something a little bit different. This is at our $42,000 mark, give or take, because we are looking at the Canadian chart. Now, just to go over this brief, I haven't drawn a trend line up here, but I guess you could. So hypothetically, something like that. I'm not going to actually do that here, but you, you see where we're kind of hitting that on our wicks. Uh, so you can kind of see that we're at a trend line as it stands. But if you look at this trend line that I, I drew here, we can see where we interacted with it multiple times. This section where we kind of hit it and then shot down as a line of resistance. So we hit this, acted as a line of resistance, shot back down. We came back up with some sort of momentum and we were able to break it and it became a line of support, making it so we shoot above and hold above this line. So now this line is acting as a line of support if we ever interact with this again. A line of resistance and a line of support is typically trend lines drawn on the chart that interact with a price over and over where that price has definitively made something happen. So for example here, this same trend line kind of interacted with this. It acted almost as a line of support here for a little bit. Then we got this doji candle and then shot right back down. Now again, if you look back, because this line wasn't drawn because of this or anything up here, it was drawn because of this out here. So if you look at this, you can see where that line kind of goes through, acted as a line of resistance shot back down and then again we blew past it and it became a line of support until finally breaking down below. Now we did interact with it uh, in this candle, but obviously we made it quite above. And again, just to go through the same thing applies if you're doing something uh, on the lower end of the chart. Just So again, where it acts as a line of support. So it acted as a line of support here, acted as a line of support here, 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 and then ultimately over down here before we got our fire off to the upside. So drawing trend lines isn't the only way to identify points of resistance or support if a number hits that. So for example, we have the 200 day moving average here. Uh, now we've hit the 200 day moving average a lot of times. So even if we look back here where we had this 200 day moving average, we did kind of hit it and it acted as a line of resistance because we broke through with this candle kind of shooting down. So for example, here we have a couple of different instances where we did hit our 200 day. So for example, we hit it here, uh, kind of going as a line of resistance because we broke through with this candle kind of going down below uh, and then losing that. Now, if we look back here again, that 200 day acted as a line of resistance again on this daily candle, but we were able to shoot up with it. Now, again, once we go above a line, the same thing with trends and trend lines, when we interact with the price at the same time over and over, same thing happens with lines. When you go up above it, it becomes a line of support instead of a line of resistance. So here we kind of tried to hold above it. Uh, did test with it and then shot back up. So we had this another interaction with our 200 day, this time acting as a line of support, bringing us above our 200 day. Then we did come back down, hit that 200 day again, retested it, and then again, it acted as a line of support, bringing us back above. Now we're in a situation where we fought with this 200 day for a couple of days. We had this big string fighting on the 200 day and now finally we've dropped below. So what does that mean? Now we've talked a lot about where Bitcoin can go, where it is going to go. I do firmly believe Bitcoin has to go down before it goes back up. Now we do know that September is a rough month typically for the price action for Bitcoin. So I'm not overly concerned here and we know that there's a lot of macroeconomic stuff happening in the economy really impacting where bitcoin is right now but that is the basics on drawing trend lines finding support and resistance on both a trend line and a maybe a moving average and again for drawing lines there's no perfect science to it everyone's going to do it slightly different whether it's measuring by the wicks or measuring by the candles so it is really ultimately up to you what you decide 
That's it for me. If you did like this video, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe to the channel for more crypto news and content. All right, everyone. Happy hodling.